My clients are rock stars, closing 100,000 deals like it's no big deal before 10 a.m. When they tell me right before they are about to walk into a big meeting that they are pumped and are going to close the deals, that their business has more than doubled in revenue, this doesn't surprise me. Success in business and in life is all about your mindset. Mindset work is kind of a big deal. Business is a learnable skill. I remember when I started in business, I had no idea what I was doing. It was hilarious. I didn't think I could be successful and had limiting beliefs about making a lot of money. This stopped me from creating a business that was what I wanted. Until I did the mindset work, this is when everything changed for me. First thing is first when working with clients these days. What are your imaginary rules you're playing life by? What beliefs did you pick up about money, success, happiness? When then we reprogram it until your mind is in alignment for attracting exactly what you want. Mindset is everything. This is from our guest today, Deirdre Siriani. This is Agree or Disagree, the podcast. I'm your host, Deidre Suriani, and you're listening to the Human Unleashed Podcast, where we connect with change makers in action every second week. As you know, stepping into your truth and owning it unapologetically is something I am super passionate about. And I truly believe that you can do, be, and create anything in this life that you want with the right mindset and support to get you there. And this is why we have this show is the voice of Deirdre Siriani, the host of the Human Unleashed podcast, which drops every second Tuesday on Podbean and iTunes, and she is our guest today. If you are one that uh, are in the midst of growing your side, quote-unquote, side hustle or small business, or are you feeling like you have an idea but are not sure what to do with it? Or are you feeling really stuck where you are at, whether that's be at your tireless nine to five job or feeling a need and change in career or whatever, uh, whatever, whatever. My guest will help you with that. Uh, according to her Facebook profile, she, be, be, um, I got her, i sorry, I didn't write this down. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> That's this is authentic podcasting right here. Uh, um, I help people become radically aligned with their purpose in their business and life. Deirdre, welcome. Well, thanks so much for having me, Kevin. This is awesome. I um, first of all, I love the name of your show. Agree Thank you. Or disagree, and thanks for the amazing intro. Like, whoa. Well, thank you for being you. I just yeah. <laughs> so we. Maybe people don't know you, so tell us about you. How did you get started where you're at right now? Wow. Well, <laughs> it's uh, it's quite the story, I guess you could say. I've done so many different. Uh, I've done so many different things in business and in life that has led me to where I am right now. And a big part of that is trying on a lot of different things to see what worked for me and what didn't work for me. So if we go back to my childhood. My parents are serial entrepreneurs and own different businesses. So I grew up in that setting, um, which was really cool because my parents running their own businesses, doing their own things. So that's empowering. That's an empowering environment, which I think definitely plays a part to me doing what I do now. Um, But when I finished high school, I went to Calgary. I'm originally from Kamloops, BC, a small town. And I went to Calgary and I went in for broadcast journalism. So I actually used to work in radio and TV and I was the entertainment girl. So I'd show up on location and be like, hey, it's Deidre. Come on and check this event out. Yada, yada, yada. And then years later, after going to school for broadcast journalism and, you know, being in that scene, I moved to Vancouver for my boyfriend at the time and completely changed what I was doing professionally, not because I wanted to, but because I guess I was kind of forced to. I couldn't find anything in my field that I loved. And I tried on a couple jobs, but as I said, it wasn't really good fit. And I was like, okay, 
So if I'm going to stay in Vancouver for this guy, which is crazy because it's not something that I ever thought that I would do is change my career because I was so in love with broadcasting. I'm like, I got to do something else. So in Vancouver, I'm sure as you know, Kevin, <laughs> everyone is a yoga teacher. Like, let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Every it's, second person, right? Yeah. yeah. I feel bad that I'm not. Yeah. I feel out of the room. Well, <laughs> you should probably go to do your 200 hours then, okay? Okay. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so naturally, me, I was like, okay, like, what should I do? You know, I didn't want to go back into serving because I was li I was the worst server in the world. Um, and I, like someone would order like a Corona, I bring them like a Coors Light. Like, I'm like, I'm not doing that again. Um, and, and I was like, okay, wh what can I do? So I did my yoga teacher training as people do in Vancouver, every second person, except for you. You're the only one, Kevin. I'm a, I'm the outlier. I win. <laughs> You're the one. You're yes. The one. And so, and so I did that for a little while. I ran a studio for a year and more than tripled their revenue. Um, I was managing it. And through that experience, I realized like, wow, like I'm doing this for someone else's business. I'm like, I want to do this for myself. Like I'm working so much and so hard and I want to, I want to create my own business. So I blindly went into starting my own business, had no idea what I was doing. I started cold calling companies and, and the company that I started is called Yoga Rush and it's corporate wellness. And it's actually turned into corporate wellness and culture and employee retention. So that's all of the things that that company does. But I literally was calling companies and I was like, hey, my name's Deidre and uh, I offer yoga and uh, people that really need yoga are the ones that are busy at work. And, and so I started my own business at that time and I had no idea what I was doing, like zero. I just started doing it. And, and that's a pro and that's a con because it's great to like take action, but it's also um, very important to have guidance. So through that experience, I, I, I love teaching yoga. It was really fun, but I always felt like something was missing. I was like, you know what? I loved, I loved radio. It was super interactive. Got to meet new people all the time. And you can probably tell, Kevin, I like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell? Uh, <laughs> I, I, you seem quiet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My mom used to make fun of me. And she's like, yeah, you should be on radio because you talk so fast. I'm like, Oh, thanks, mom. Um, so, so then at, at that point, I was like, you know, maybe I'll get back into radio. I had a couple opportunities in Vancouver, and I worked for a network, um, but I was covering random events, and I, I wasn't fulfilled. So then I was like, okay, I want more. And that's when I started my podcast, Human Unleashed. You did a little intro, which was really cool at the beginning of our conversation. And that's when I got to uh, connect with people who are creating massive change in the world and people that I geek out to. Um, because when people are like, okay, what do you do for fun? Well, really, like, I love working and working with entrepreneurs because that is fun to me. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so after doing that, it's been about a year of having that show. You know, years and years ago, uh, I, was, I was hosting a, a, a corporate retreat and I met this guy who he he works with people and, and develops them similar to what I do, but different space. And I remember um, him asking me, okay, like you do yoga, you do personal development, you're here at this, uh, you know, tech company retreat and you're helping people create their goals and visions within the company, which is really cool. But like, uh, what else do you do? I'm like, well, you know, I kind of coach people and Right away, he knocks that out, and he's like, you kind of coach people. I'm like, well, like, I've always wanted to, you know, coach people. I've been doing it for years. I just haven't been, you know, calling myself that professionally or charging for it. And so that really uh, planted a seed, and I realized how, uh, you know, I wasn't owning it. I hadn't stepped into it fully. And, you know, it's been a couple years since then, and I recently, within the last year, has stepped into being a business, a life and business strategist. And I help people step into their truth, own it unapologetically, and be the most expressed version of themselves and create massive change in the world. So long story short, I've done a lot of random different things. And now I'm in a zone and it's where I'm supposed to be. And I really hope that answered your question. I think it did. I think it did. Where did you go to school? Uh, Mount Royal University. Oh, Calgary. Okay. I'm from Calgary. I worked at SAIT for eight years and I almost went to the broadcasting school at SAIT, but they had a wait list and I ended up, that's how I ended up here because I studied at Van Arts. So. Oh, awesome. That's yeah. So cool. 
Aww. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we started with, with mindset. I did a little poll before um, on Twitter, which you can follow me at KVOLE. Uh, on the scale of one to 10, how much are you living your life to your potential? And I asked why. 25% said one to three out of 10. 42% four to six. 33% seven to 10. Um, why are people feeling that they're four to six? Ooh, okay, so four to six, as in like they're kind of living their potential? Yeah. I feel like if we were honest with everybody, if we sat down and poured drinks into everybody, um, I like that. and people would probably say that they're out of four to six. I think it's, it's very bold of people to say that they're seven to ten. Mm, mm. Yeah, so you're, so you're wondering why most people are within the four to six range. Yeah, yeah. what's your experience with that? Well, okay, so for me, like I, I told you about my journey, and it was really challenging. Throughout my journey, I, I hit all of these points where, um, you know, I had this identity crisis almost when I moved to Vancouver. I was the broadcasting girl. I was the girl in radio, and that was my identity. I, I really um, was connected to that. And, um, you know, so having to switch careers and having to start all over again, in a sense, was kind of a blow to my ego. And I didn't really know who I was. And it took a lot of work for me to discover who I really am. And I know that sounds silly because a lot of us are like, oh, well, I'm human. I'm a person. I, you know, I, you know, this is what I do. That's, you know, this is what I do. And this is what I don't do. But we have attachments as to who we are. Mm -hmm. So we develop these at a young age. Um, as well as limiting beliefs of who we need to be to be happy, to be successful, to be accepted. And so the thing is, most people are walking around, and I was one of them, like I'm not taking myself out of the equation, 100% I was, are walking around and we're at a job and we're doing things because we feel like we should do them. And so when we're doing things that we think that we should do, we're not fully living in our purpose, we're not fully happy, but we're doing them because we have a fear of rejection. We have a fear of doing something different. We have a fear of failure. So I really believe that that's what's holding people back from taking that next step and creating a life that they love and living in their purpose and being in their full potential. It's fear of the unknown. It's fear of change. It's fear of the main people in their circle of friends or their family members you know, being like, what are you doing? I don't understand it. And so for anyone who does take that step, who is moving forward, who are in the seven to 10 range, they have gone through the fire. They have gone through those areas that are super uncomfortable in their life to get to where they are. So it takes work and it's very, very uncomfortable. And the truth is most people, actually everyone, we've all been trained, we've been programmed that being uncomfortable is a bad thing. I completely disagree with that. You have to be uncomfortable to grow. You have to. If you're learning something new in school, there's confusion. If you're actually learning, if you're actually changing something in your brain, there's confusion. If you are exercising and you're doing something that you've never done before, it's uncomfortable. You're going to be sore the next day. You're going to be out of breath. You're going to struggle. And same with making any kind of change in your life. There's a struggle. There's that uncomfortable phase. And the truth is most people don't want to go through that. And if they get a taste of it, they think it's a sign that it's not for them. So I believe that people are avoiding moving into their truth and stepping into their full potential because they believe that being uncomfortable is a sign that it's wrong or they just don't want to do the work to get there. Because we, yeah, we've been trained on the idea of stability. We have to have the nine to five job Monday to Friday, pay our bills, buy our house, get our car and get our family, however that looks. And that's our comfort. And if we don't have that, we're not going to survive. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's that's the safe way. That's been the traditional way. I mean, um you get a lot of people working at St. for eight years. I remember people, I remember the parents, the helicopter parents bringing in their kid saying, we need this, we need him in school, put him in a program. What does he want to do? It doesn't matter. Well, no, actually it does matter because he needs to be happy in what he's doing. And you're spending mm -hmm. tens of thousands of dollars or you're asking for the government or a loan from a bank for tens of thousands of dollars for them to do something. But they need to be, you know, and it's just this circular argument. 
as opposed to like, okay, maybe travel, maybe try something else and then go to school a little bit later. Or you're in the point where, um, and I, I, this has been, you know, um, being an adult and you're like tired of the job and you're like, I don't know what to do. I have to go to school and, and being afraid of jumping off that bridge because it's an uncomfortable bridge and you don't know where it's going to land. Right. And like, oh, I don't have stuff, whatever that is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's a real fear for sure. And, and, and that's the thing, like my parents, when I went to school for broadcasting, you know, they, they just wanted me to like be a nurse, go to school, be a, a dental hygienist because they didn't want me to, you know, be unstable maybe as a, an entrepreneur or whatever. So it's interesting how stability is something that we gravitate towards because it's safety. <laughs> so what is a way that some people, when you deal with people in entrepreneur with, uh, or starting their, their quote unquote side hustle, uh, things like that, um, what keeps people moving forward? Like when you say, when, like, let's say I came to you and I said, you know what? I want to monetize this podcast. I do want to monetize this podcast, but mm -hmm. you know, something like that. How do you know I'm going to be, how, how do you know I'm going to move forward? Or I'm going to be one of those that are going to be stuck in the rut of basic entrepreneurship. Okay, so, so the question is, how do I know if you're going to be stuck in the rut? Yeah. If you're going to move forward. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. What's okay. the difference? So that's a really that's a really great question, and so I can discover this through conversation. Um, intuitively, I, I just usually know right away if the person wants it. If they want it, they will take that first step and invest in themselves. Um, I personally, I never sell myself to people. I'm never like, oh yeah, like let's work together. You know, I'm, you know, the person has to take that first step of saying, okay, where I am right now is not working for me and I want to be over there. I'm like, this is my current reality, but that's my dream reality. And my current reality isn't cutting for, it, it's not cutting it for me anymore, whether it's in my business or in my life. And, and I'm willing to trust in the process and take that first step and move into, you know, a coaching and a business relationship with you. So when people are willing to admit that things are not working and they're willing to take that first step, that is huge. If it's a, you know, I'm not sure back and forth or trying to bargain prices or, or people making excuses, or, you know, something along those lines, right away, I'm like, you know what, I think you're great. I like the idea of maybe your business or what's going on. I'll give them some tips of, you know, things that they can do now in their business to move them forward. But I won't take them on as a client unless I know that they're serious and are like, okay, this isn't working. I'm ready to take that next step. So that's, that's number one. And hiring a coach, Kevin, hiring your first business coach or um, strategist or whatever is a big deal. When I hired my first coach, I was so nervous. I was like, this guy is going to figure me out and he's going to think I'm a loser and he's going to think I'm not successful. And it was so scary. Like I had a visceral response when I, when I paid him the first time, not because of the amount, the amount was large, not going to lie, but because I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm in it for real now. So I feel like that first step, you know, reaching out to someone and being like, okay, this is where I'm at, like being honest with it, which is really challenging to do, right? Especially when you're not getting the results that you want and you've tried multiple things and you're like, okay, what you're doing resonates. I know that you've helped other people and um, let's do this together. And so when people connect with me and I'm connected with what they want to do, and their purpose, because I have to be connected to what they do, then I know that I can support them, but they have to take that first step. And that's a really uh, scary step for a lot of people. So that, that's how I know. Hmm. So, yeah, that's, it's, it's interesting that first, and because there's that, there's something, um, my friend Aaron talks about an achievement club. There's something in our head that, um, we, we have to name it. And I, I kind of name it shitty where shitty comes up and, and says all these things about why you cannot be successful. And even that first step, oh, the cost of that business coach, that's really expensive. How do you know you can trust Mr. or Mrs. Business Coach? Right. You know, you know, yeah. Um, so in terms of 
what's kind of the let's let's hear some excuses you hear when someone is coming to you and saying, Deirdre, I want to be a coach, but you to coach me, but mm, I, I don't know. I have to talk to my whoever. Right. So, you know, this is really funny. I really like the voice that you did there. You're like, oh, I need to talk to my husband, my girlfriend. I need to whatever, like some sort of excuse. So usually when there's an excuse there, it's because there's a fear. There's a fear of uh, maybe failure. There's a fear of success because, you know, what does a fear of failure look like? What does a fear of success look like? So um, just bringing it back to that first, I think, is a, a key piece because, um, with my business and when I started, I thought I had a fear of failure. I was like, oh, I have this massive fear of failing. So if I put myself fully out there um, and I you know, really commit and invest in myself, I could fail. But really, I had a fear of success. And the reason why is because growing up in my household, my parents were very successful. They did well. But at the same time, they sacrificed a lot of things to be successful. And so I, I, I brought on these imaginary rules, these limiting beliefs, and that was really where um, maybe my excuses were coming from uh, for not hiring someone or working with someone sooner. So if someone says to me, I don't have the money or, um, you know, I have to check with so-and-so or not right now, but maybe when I make me more money, I know it's a fear. I know it's a fear of success or failure. And through that, I can coach them a little bit. And, and get into, okay, so where is this really coming from? So a uh, perfect example, I had a conversation with someone the other day who has a business, it's a side hustle. Um, I'm going to call it more of a hobby though, because they're not really making, um, they're not generating a lot of income. And they have this goal of making, you know, an extra four or $5,000 a month. And they're pretty far away from that. And so through conversation, this person's like, okay, like now it's not a good time, but you know, in the summertime. So I coach them a little bit because it's good to get people out of their thought patterns. They can just see what's coming up. First of all, it's not for me to pressure them to work with me because I don't believe in that. And I want people who are fuck yes. I really mm. hope I can swear on your podcast. Well, yes, you can. Yes. Do you know how many times I hear that? It's like, oh, I hope I could swear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And all of that is explicit. And everyone's like, why? I'm like, because people just can show up as they are. It's yeah, important. It's very important. Yeah. Good. I'm glad we cleared that so I don't keep going. Um, or I do. So so within the conversation, I picked up really quickly that this person has a belief system that uh, or or an imaginary rule is what I like to call them, is uh, if this then that. So or when this then that. So she's like, when I have more time, I can commit to something. Right. So that that's an imaginary rule or um, a limiting belief. And so here's the reason why a limiting belief or imaginary rule is something that holds you back from taking action and moving forward with whatever you want or really creating what it what it is that you want in your in your reality in the moment right now. So through conversation, I said to her, I'm like, OK, I understand that you want to focus on this in the summertime because you'll have you know, more time, whatever. I said, but what happens is when you put these things off, it's going to be next summer, the summer after that, and then it's going to be a financial thing. So regardless of when you spend the money, you're still spending it. So for me, I, mm. I break it down with people. I coach them a little bit. I show them what's coming up for them. And then I give them the space to make the decision on their own because they have to be a fuck yes if they're going to work with me. Otherwise, they're not my ideal client. Mm. But mm. a lot of it's fear, fear of, Okay, so fear of putting money out there, investing in themselves, and then what if, what if I invest in this, like, all this money and time, but I don't follow through? What if I'm not good enough? What if I can't have everything I want? And these are limiting beliefs that we pick up, you know, throughout our life. So it's about identifying them and then, and then going from there. Hmm. Yeah, because throughout my process the last couple of years here, there's been a lot of, like, oh. What if, what if, and you know, it's hard, it's hard to get over that. Um, it's very hard to get over that. Uh, okay. but, uh, and I'm not asking you to coach me out of that, but well, let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Kevin, I am interrupting your thought pattern right now by calling you out on your podcast. On my own podcast. <laughs> I, so this is me. Here I am. Yes. I am here. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit about belief systems. Okay. Yeah. Because like I struggle with, you know, all of this too. I just have tools that I use, right? Right. I'm not, I'm not smarter. I'm not more advanced. I just know how to get myself out of a funk really quickly. So in order to change your beliefs, you have to change your mindset. Right. You have to change your actions. So for you, if there's a lot of what ifs coming up in anything, do the opposite of what you think you should do. Right. So if the what if is like, what if I do this and it doesn't work? Well, why don't you just do it and see what happens? And so that's kind of how I like to play my life. I like to challenge my what ifs. And if it doesn't work out, it's, it's kind of fun, right? It's like, oh, it didn't work. Cool. Now I know. Um, so Because you're no worse off, right? You just, not. you asked and you're still at the same position. You're not worse. You didn't take a step back from it. You're still there. Absolutely. And if you went ahead, you're ahead. So there's, it's, there's no lose. Absolutely. And, and another thing that um, I've witnessed, not necessarily within like the clients that I have or prospective clients or whatever you want to call them, um, but people have a fear that others who are professionals in their field are trying to trick them or are trying to take their money. And you know what? I'm sure there are maybe some people out there that um, you know do that, but I really believe that everyone is good. I know that there aren't great people out there. They're going through things and, and they don't have the best intentions, but reality check, most people want you to succeed. So if there's someone out there that can help you in your business or your personal life or with something, trust them. Trusting someone and trusting in the process will get you results. Holding back and not being sure will give you the results that you think that you're not going to get because you're holding back and you're not trusting. So um, that's something I've witnessed um, in the coaching industry in general. Um, and just, you know, everywhere it's like, oh, but this person just wants my money. I'm like, no, they actually can help you. Hmm. Like you want to make change. You got to, you got to do something too. Right. And, right. and money is just an exchange of energy. So hmm. it's just energy. That's it. But is there a way to know, um, the difference between someone that you would connect with as a coach and someone you wouldn't like what type of questions like if someone is here and like hmm, I need a, I do need a business coach and I don't know where to find one um, right. how do you connect that what are some of the questions like they're, they're like if someone is starting in from their hobby to going from hobby to side hustle how do you get that coach that connects you well there's different coaches that do different things right there's lots of niche areas so there's some coaches that help you know people start a business and that's that's the only thing that they do. And then there's coaches that are like, okay, I only help people who are already at six figures go to seven figures or seven figures to eight figures or whatever. So there's very specific coaches out there. I'm a business strategist. So I work with a lot of different businesses and I meet people with where they're at. But when hiring a coach, I think it's important that you actually like them because you're going to be spending a lot of time with them <laughs> and they need to, they need to be comfortable like one thing that a lot of my clients say is, okay, you're sweet and unassuming, apparently, this is what I've heard. Um, and then you're really intense and really funny. So it's never dull. There's never a dull moment when I'm working <laughs> with people. And um, so those people resonate with me and that's why they work with me. But there's other people who I'm sure um, want to work with a coach who's very analytical and is like, okay. So you need to do 25% uh, of this, and then you need to do this and this and this. I don't work that way. I work with my intuition. I work with where people are at, and we create a vision of where they want to be, and, and we map it out together, and that's how we move, right? So that's my style of teaching, but there are other coaches out there who have a system, and they use the same system on everyone, and, and that's what works. And I personally, in my experience, don't believe in that because everyone is different, um, entrepreneurs, especially we all are people. We're people with a past. We're people with limiting beliefs. And I could give you, I could give you a strategy, Kevin, to do something within your business. But if I don't know everything else that's going on within you, 
I could give you the formula for anything, but how do I know you're going to follow through? How do I know that you're going to believe in it? How, that, how do I know that it's going to work for you? Mm. I don't. So I really believe in working with people with where they're at and helping them move forward and growing together. So I'm basically a business partner minus I don't take 50% of your business. And that works well for me and I feel good about it because I'm in the process with the person. But then there's business coaches that will be like, okay, I'll meet with you for one day and we'll create a plan and see you later. And it just depends on what resonates and you've got to find someone that you like, that you respect and that you can trust. And I think that those are the most important things. And if you have a really niche industry, um, that doesn't make sense to most people, but there's a coach out there who is all about that. Maybe that's the right coach for you. You just got to like look around, feel it out and see what resonates. And then if someone resonates and it feels good, go with it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I was thinking when you were talking about the scene from Karate Kid okay. and, and, um, at the start, uh, and it's in both movies, but I, but I remember the, I remember the, it was the, the original one where, uh, um, he went to Ralph Macchio and Ralph was all like, I want to learn karate. And he was like, wash this fence, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. And that's, that's good for a good 20 minutes in the movie. And I kind of feel that the same way, cause you got to build your blocks, right? You, I mean, we all want to get to, uh, even the professional hockey player wants to be the number one center, right? But you have to get to there, you, mm. and there's the steps before we forget that, right? And I, so it's it's about I think build. I think what I'm hearing you say it's about building blocks. Absolutely, because you could come you could come and work with me, and if I'm just giving you you know a random um, strategy or you know a system, but you haven't built the blocks before that, it's not going to benefit you, right? Or maybe you, you're like halfway through and you, you don't need to do some of it. So exactly, you're right. You are correct mm. about building that foundation. And I love that you thought of Karate Kid. Like, that's so funny. <laughs> I don't know. It just randomly came in my mind. Uh, <laughs> it's, wax on. Wax off. Wax on. Wax off. I like it. So when I was listening to the Granola Girl podcast, which is episode 30, which you can check out on Podbeam, uh, she talked a little bit about knowing that there's people that it's uh, what it's she was talking honest entrepreneurship. Honest entrepreneurship. You're doing yeah, a yeah, catering episode on the podcast. Yes, I almost feel like I should play that clip. Oh, we'll just talk about it. Um, <laughs> you can talk about it. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Um, the create so. She talked about the idea like sometimes you're in something and she learned in her process that, you know what, I loved doing this thing. And she was like, I, it's not a business for me. It's a hobby and that's great, but it's not something I want to be a business at. So how do you know when to have that conversation when you're, it's like, you know what, this, this is a great idea. I really love doing this. But it's not going to make you what you think it's going to make you. Well, I think it's interesting. So first of all, April Bellia is amazing. I had her on the show, and um, that episode is called Honest Entrepreneurship. Yes. She actually did turn her hobby into a business, and she's done very well. She's such a lovely person. And so i just clarifying what you said, so it just makes a little bit more sense. Just yeah. connect the dots, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, she was talking about how some people feel that um, if they have a business idea or if they can be in business, they have a thought that they should be in business. So oftentimes, let's say that you're listening right now and you make jewelry and it's fun for you and it's a way for you to relax and de-stress at the end of the day. Um, and just because your friends like it doesn't mean you have to turn it into a business. Like it's safe to keep it a hobby. So it's interesting because when I started teaching yoga, um, I love yoga and I started teaching a lot of yoga um, with my company and, and then I just didn't like attending yoga anymore. So it wasn't really like, it wasn't fun for me. So it took the fun out of what it was because it was my full time career for a while. So I guess um, a good question to ask yourself if you're listening right now and you're thinking about starting a business, is this something that is an outlet for you that's fun? Mm. And 
can you see yourself doing it every single day and and monetizing it because a business needs to make money otherwise it's a hobby so um and then another layer of that is okay so let's say you have a side hustle and you want to monetize and you want to do it full time can you see yourself stepping outside of it so what happens with a lot of newbie entrepreneurs and this this needs to happen in the beginning because that's how you get started you don't want to spend a lot of money at the beginning and and unfortunately a lot of entrepreneurs do because they're just you know reading books and this and that like get the website do all this it's like you actually just need to make money and start growing it and then you can worry about those things later and you don't have to spend a lot of money so sorry back to your question so you asked how do how how does one know um, whether or not they should turn your hobby into a business? You have to really love what you're doing, but you also need to know that there's going to be times in business. This happens to everyone. Everyone, if you are fully 100% in business and you are working for yourself, and what I mean by that is you don't have another source of income, like you're not going to a job nine to five. There's this is how you're paying your bills. This is what you want to do. You need to know that it's not always going to be easy, okay? So it's not always going to be easy. It's going to be up and down like a roller coaster. Some days you're going to feel amazing, and other days you're going to question if you should be in business, and some days you're going to want to quit, and then it's up and down, up and down, up and down. So do you want to be on that roller coaster, or do you want to keep your you know, hobby as a hobby so it's fun for you? And so what I see a lot of uh, business owners, uh, the mistakes that they make is they start a business because they love it, um, but they have a hard time asking for money in return for their service or their product because they love doing it so much. So it's actually about getting into the mindset that, okay, this is my business. This is my end goal. I want to do this full time. I want to be able to support myself and then creating um, a strategy, working with a strategist or a business coach to make that happen and investing in yourself. Can you put yourself out there? Can you be vulnerable? Can you be open? Can you be open to learning things that you don't know? And then as I was mentioning before, stepping outside of your business. So if you're a service-based business, um, uh, you know, a roadblock that a lot of business owners uh, bump into is, okay, let's say that I, I own a yoga studio and I teach full time or um, whatever it is that's, that's in the service-based industry and I'm constantly teaching, teaching, teaching because I don't want to pay other teachers. That's, that's just a scenario. And so because of that, I am teaching, you know, 10, 20 classes a week. I do have teachers. But on top of that, I have to do accounting. I have to do social media. I have to do marketing. I have all these other things to take care of. And so what happens is newbie entrepreneurs, business owners, they get overwhelmed because they're trying to do everything. So at some point in your business, you need to bring people on and maybe step outside of it. So maybe at some point, if you are in you know, the jewelry industry or want to, you have these really cool mala beads that you're putting together and your friends like, it's like, can you step outside of making them full time? Because at some point, as your business grows, you're going to be stepping outside of it and you're going to be working on growing the brand. So going back to your question, um, how do you know if you, take, if you, can, if you should take your hobby and turn it into a business. You need to love it and you need to know the end goal because if you don't really know what you want to do with it, you're probably going to putter in the business and, and struggle along the way. So it's important to have a clear vision of where you could see it going, being okay with um, stepping out of working in the business, growing it, monetizing it, and, and you know being guided because um, you may be really good at creating jewelry but you may know nothing about business. And so um, I hope that I answered your question. Yes, I, it, okay. it did. Because I think what I'm, what I'm hearing is love. And, and Melody, when we were talking on Friday, we had a conversation after. And she, she, she talked to me about the ideas like, you're worth it. And people have to remember that you're worth it. And when we're doing stuff, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you're worth being paid for what you do. You've put in an effort, whatever that effort is, and you're worth it, right? Mm-hmm. And um, that's really important to hear. And it, it's that was a good mindset. Not that I don't believe I'm worth it, but it's it's you know it it's it's uh, that was a mindset shift for me in terms of of changing some of the that stuff. Right. Um, but and it's also I think 
let's before we get into burnout, the the downs, the puttering, the mm-hmm. discouragement, mm-hmm. Um, which happens. I mean, especially in the artist world, where it's like, oh, I'm not making any, my, oh, I'm not getting any whatever. You know, mm-hmm. how do you keep yourself in that calm mindset of it's going to be okay? Right. So, you know, it sounds funny because it's almost like hire a coach. I'm not trying to do that. No. Um, it's good to know what's going to happen in your business. You need to know the ebbs and flows, the seasons, all of that for sure. Because when you know the ebbs and flows within your industry and, and your business, depending on what kind of business you're in, you can prepare for it and know that it's coming so that when it hits, it's not a surprise. It's not like, oh, I'm a really bad um, coach or, oh, I'm a really bad this or that. It's like you just know it's coming, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of personal trainers, for example, and I, I work with um, a few different personal trainers, they know oftentimes in the summer they're not very busy. And so that's when they make extra plans to go and do things or they work more on their business strategy for the year and they take care of things they haven't been able to do. So um, knowing the ebb and flow of your industry um, is so important for, you know, handling those moments and then also having a really good support system. So, you know, having a coach that you work with, surrounding yourself with others who are starting a business and being honest about with where you're at. There's this thing that happens with business owners and I hate it. And I'm, I was guilty of it too. Like, not going to lie. Like I, I was, we, we all are is acting like things are great in business and in Mm. life when they're not. Because when you put yourself out as a business owner and you put everything on the line um, and your friends are asking how business is, of course, like they don't know anything about business anyways, oftentimes, maybe they don't. If you're like, oh, it's not going well, depending on who's in in your circle, they might be like, oh, wow, you really should go back to that job. Like, you know, you're really struggling. I knew this wasn't a good idea. So Mm. first of all, it's important for you to have a good support system that you can talk to about business. So preferably people who are in business and understand it so you can have real conversations and not with people who are going to throw you out that are going to take you out of wanting to be a business owner and discourage you more. So support system is huge. Friends, family, um, you know, if they're in business, finding people who are in the same kind of industry as you, maybe asking for feedback, what's working for you, working with a coach, and self-care. Like, oh my gosh, Mm. self-care. You know, especially when you're busy, always having those rituals that you do to take care of yourself so that, you know, you're, you're feeling connected to yourself and grounded. And so when these things do come up, it's like, okay, like it's not consuming your entire life. You're still sleeping, you're still eating well, and you've got some routines happening. But there's there's ways to move around it, and that's what I help people with. But I really do feel um, as a foundational piece is having a good circle of entrepreneurs that um, you can talk to about what's going on and having a business coach and, and knowing the ebbs and flows of your industry so you can prepare for it because there's, there's different ways to prepare for it. And sometimes – the low seasons in your industry can actually be at your most profitable months, and there's ways of doing that. So, um, but being an entrepreneur, you need to know that you are on a roller coaster. Some days you're going to feel amazing and like you're on top of the world, like you're a rock star, and other days you're going to be like, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing. And actually, the low point of being like, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing, that's when a lot of clarity comes in that's when a lot of um insight comes into okay this isn't working i need to learn something what do i need to learn or who do i need to hire and the more you delegate the more you put yourself out there and ask for help the better your business is going to be a hundred percent that's yeah that's that's good because i mean branch that out i mean there's single entrepreneurs out there there's married entrepreneurs out there there's um divorced entrepreneurs out there and you know there i mean there's it, it's so important to have that network to kind of get through there's because there's so much that people don't think about when they're going through something it's like you're hustling and bustling which is our next topic i guess hustle and burnout but we hustle so much that we forget all of these other things and, and you talked about this also in the granola podcast and i'm not I hope I'm not spoiling too much because I'm just going to say that you talked about how 
isolated and alone it can be to be an entrepreneur because it's so depressing because we have to have this facade, right? We have to have everything's going great. We're great. Well, we don't have to have that. That's a limiting belief. See, this is how coaching works on this podcast right there. You don't have to have it. We don't have to have it, but we do have that limiting belief of like, we have to present an image of being something, right? And not, you know, or unless, and because someone's going to give that advice, you know, you should go back to this thing, whatever it is. and job. Your job. Yeah. 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 yeah so, um, yeah, it's interesting because as you were saying, we tend to wear masks. We tend to pretend that things are great when they're not. But really, that's just people. That's just mm. most people. And we're all we're all human. We all do that because oftentimes we're taught that um, we need to act like things are good in order to protect ourselves, right? Um, and so in business, too, it's, it's, it's great to have that support system. Going back to having a really good group of entrepreneurs that you work with, having a coach that you can crack open to in a safe way without putting out there on Facebook that, oh my gosh, I feel like a loser today. And then the next day being like, I feel so great. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's about being okay with putting yourself out there, but also being aware of who you're sharing it with to um, protect yourself. And when I say protect yourself, it's more about honoring your journey, you know, and I honoring your journey is important because you know, um, oftentimes on Facebook or social media or wherever we see people and we assume that they're doing really well. We're like, oh, wow, that person's so successful. Um, whereas I've worked with people who have a massive following online, like insane, and they're not doing well financially. And then there's people that don't have a following online that are doing very well financially. And then there's people who are making 20 plus thousand dollars a month in their business and still aren't sure if they're a good you know, uh, good in their, good in their space. I'm not going to say what it is, but right. um, so it's interesting. We're all going through this ebb and flow, no matter what it is you do. It's great to have that one person that you can share everything with that can guide you. That's going to support you to get to the next step. And it's also so important to have that circle of entrepreneurs that are also open about these these topics so that you you feel safe and that you can open up and it's a scary thing it's scary to put yourself on the line and um and, and go full on into something so being supported is essential yes very true very true you gave me some things to think about there uh <laughs> the, the well there's yeah I, I i won't get in this this necessarily on this one um <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway, um, the idea of Brittany Brander, uh, who I should introduce you to, uh, yeah. talked about this idea uh, when I interviewed her about the idea of um, hustle and how and burnout. And I can't remember the term I, it, she uses, um, but it's kind of like a negative. It's been used as a the, the grind it out, the hustle it out. The hustle lifestyle of the entrepreneur, uh, trying to feel like you need to do this 24-7. Um, can you talk about balancing like a work shit like this, kind of balancing it out in a way that can be healthy for you? Right. So, so this is such an interesting topic because, uh, you know, okay, we all talk about balance. But let's be real. No mm -hmm. one really likes balance. Balance is boring. At mm -hmm. least it is to me. That's my personality. And that's probably why I'm an entrepreneur. That's probably why I do what I do. Um, so you need to be okay with not always having a balanced life. Um, but in business, when you're starting out, oftentimes you have to say yes when you prefer to maybe have your Saturday off work because um, you're putting yourself out there and there's an event that you need to go to, you need to mingle, and or you need to go to this workshop to learn something in your industry. This happens a lot. Um, and to be totally honest, up until you know a couple of years ago, I was working like almost every day, not eight hours a day, not eight hours a day, but I was working every day, and I was on my phone a lot, I was on my computer, and I guess I was hustling. I don't like the word hustle. Um, I don't know why, I just don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, 
always, always being available. And, um, and it's not fun. It's not fun doing that sometimes. And when you start a business, you need to know that, okay, although I'm in business because I usually when people go into business, they want financial freedom. They want more freedom with their time and uh, they want to probably have a big impact, right? Or, or at least the people that I work with, it's all about having an impact. And so we go into business with all of these, uh, you know, ideas and dreams of what we want to create. And then we start and we're like, oh, wow, like I actually have to work pretty hard to get where I want to go. And, and that's a reality check. People need to know that, you know, you, you do have to put yourself out there. You will have a lot more flexibility. You will. It's just going to come at different times of the day and different days of the week. And when you have a plan for your business and um, you strategize, and you simplify and you outsource, things can become a lot simpler and you can create the life and, uh, and the business that you love and have a massive impact. Um, but usually, you know, the first year of business is, is, is definitely challenging. The first few years of business, you're figuring things out, especially if you're trying to do everything on your own. So what I love to talk about is creating boundaries. So you know, if you are a business owner and um, you have clients and you never want to say no to them. So I just actually had a client call uh, this morning and um, one of my clients was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I want to let this person know that I'm always available. It's like this big deal or this big client uh, that this person could, could work with. And uh, this person was thinking about maybe waiving one of their fees that they would normally do because it's such a big client and whatever, whatever. And I said, okay, wait. <laughs> hmm. And like, if you have to change the way you do business in order to work with this client, you have to have, and, and you're, you're letting go of regular boundaries of time that you would have um, just to get this client. Chances are that this client is going to push you around a little bit in the future because they expect you to bend around their schedule all of the time. And so I had this person reflect. I'm like, okay, yes, this would be an amazing client. I'm sure there's lots of opportunity there, but you have to know you're going to be working with this client for quite some time. And are you okay with having, um, you know, having them call you at, you know, two in the morning? Are you okay with talking to them, um, you know, when you want to spend time with your family? Um, are you okay with waiving more fees? Because oftentimes when you do favors in business in order to um, get a deal, that person, that client is going to ask for more and more and more exceptions. And that's when you start to let go of your boundaries, <laughs> release boundaries. There are no boundaries. And um, then you get people who want to bargain with your prices. Sometimes you don't feel valued. You're not um, sleeping. You're just not feeling good. And that's where burnout comes in. So no matter what kind of business you're in, no matter – um, whether it's your first day in business, your first year, your first few years, boundaries are essential and it's actually really healthy. And so um, I'm a recovering people pleaser. So I think I'm the perfect person to talk about. This. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I am a people pleaser, kind of re trying to recover. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> yeah, I'm a people pleaser and I'm, and I'm also a recovering chocoholic. Um, oh, well, fair enough. That's Another, that's another subject, um, another day, another topic. Um, but really, uh, creating clear boundaries in business is healthy. So if you're in business and you're, you're, maybe it's your very first client, you're so excited and you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I got this client, I can't believe they hired me, whatever. Um, it's having clear boundaries. So what, what are clear boundaries? Let's, let's clear that up. So if um, I'm working with someone, they get an agreement, they look it over, and it basically says, okay, so what is included, um, what, what does working with Deidre look like? Okay, so um, this is what's included, um, this is what's expected of me, the client, this is what, what's expected of her, this is what happens if this doesn't happen or if that doesn't happen on both ends, so we're both accountable, and, um, and, then, and then at the end we sign it. And so that talks about like times that we can um, you know, have a conversation, uh, times where I can you know, uh, jump on a call or do extra things for them to help support them, and just expectations. So it's like getting married to someone, basically. So when you get married, before you walk down the aisle and say, I do, you'll probably have conversations about standards. Okay, well, this is important to me. Is this important to you? Okay, well, I'm not going to negotiate on this. This is a non-negotiable. Okay, cool. So it's an, it's an agreement. 
So if you have someone in business, whether it's a client, an employee, um, or, or anything, it's about just letting them know, okay, like I work from this time to this time. After 6 p.m., I don't answer my phone. Um, but if I happen to pop on my computer and I see your email, um, I will, I might reply or if it's an emergency, you can call me and, and just having those standards so people know your boundaries so that you don't burn out and so that you can have that energy and feel good about your business because, you know, there's so many business owners out there that have poor boundaries that aren't charging enough that are wishy-washy with their clients. And when I say that they're taking fees, I'm not charging for certain things because maybe their competitor isn't and they want to get the client. And, and really, um, what I, there's this, there's this banner and I'm sure you've seen it, Kevin, on my Facebook page and it says, this is it. Yes. Your life, your business, your rules. So if you're going to be in business, you need to realize that this is your life, but it's also your business. So treat it like a business, have boundaries, but it's your business. So you get to create your rules. And once you have those rules, people know how to treat you. Um, people know what your boundaries are. People know, know, they know what's important to you. And I think it's so important to know that you can create your own rules in your life, in your business. You don't have to do what your competitor is doing. And to be super honest, you should do the opposite of what they're doing most of the time. I was just saying that. Blending in. Yeah. So I know I got off topic a little bit, Kevin. It's okay. <laughs> uh, boundaries. Boundaries, 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 boundaries. Well, and that 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 fits within hustle and burnout. And you know, I was thinking about this too. You know, if I was like a millionaire, which I'm not, uh, but if I'm a millionaire and I'm seeing this company that is like willing to go the quote unquote extra mile, which is I'm I'm going to get into the myth of that, the extra mile of like, okay, I'm going to do everything I want for you to make sure that you're happy. And I see this other company that is like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold some standards here and I have some boundaries. Okay, we're not going to do this for you. I might actually go to the other company because I know what I'm working with there is going to be someone who's going to take my company seriously, not bend over backwards and show me an actual respect. I, I think there's a lot of companies that would actually go, okay, wait. This company is going to be closed at it, Deirdre is going to be closed at six. Wow, she has a standard. Okay, so when you treat other clients, if I you're representing us, you're going to treat them with standards. If this client is bending over backwards for me, how what do they do for other clients, and is it really as healthy as that? And it's kind of exactly. it's yeah. kind of like oh. Uh, and I did this with a radio station here. I was like, I'll do anything you want for me to get this job. And it didn't work out, right? Okay. Instead of like, okay, no, I'm I'm only going to do this at this point. Sorry, you know. Mm. Yeah. And Okay, so I really love that you brought that up because um, the listeners right now, people who are listening – um, might think like, oh, but I want, I want a company or I want a coach or I want people to like bend over backwards, give me lots of value and do all that they can. And like straight up, I'm all about entrepreneurs, business owners, whoever going up and beyond. And what I mean by that is giving massive value so that people are getting the results or whatever they think that they're going to get and more a hundred percent. So, um, with that being said, um, a lot of business owners, um, sometimes we over promise. We're like, oh yeah, like, um, or I'm thinking more of solo entrepreneurs actually, because there's so much on your plate, right? Um, it's like, oh yeah, and I'll do this and I'll do that. Even though it's not necessarily, um, your job, like you have a specific role, but you're, you're doing all these extra pieces. And what tends to happen with people who over promise. So, um, you know, this is my role, but I'm going to do all these extra things for you is it's almost like they're over committing. And those are the people often, um, from what I've observed and you know, this is my observation. This is my experience. Um, that those are the ones that are burning out that aren't able to meet their regular clients deadlines for what they, the client signed up to have completed. So, um, so it's important to know who you're working with. And, and yeah, what their standards are and what they say that they can do and what they can't do. And if someone is begging for um, business, just in general, if, it's, if I'm begging someone to work with me, like that's not sexy, first mm. of all. 
secondly, is she really a business strategist? Can she can she pay her bills? Um, you know, so when you're working with someone, you really do want to look at them and be like, do I want to work with this person? Is this an ideal client? And if they're asking for discounts, if they're asking for all these things that, you know, aren't, isn't something that you do or isn't your packaging. Yeah. You can take that as data. Like, Hmm, maybe in other packages I could include that, or maybe I can't, but also standing in what you do and knowing your worth and not, um, you know, not negotiating everything that you do because when you're in business, you need to be confident with um, the work that you're doing and the value that you're offering. And when you're offering massive value and you know your worth, it's easy to turn down clients because you're like, they're just going to be a pain in the ass later on. And they will be, you know, it's just, it's just straight up. So um, that's my advice. <laughs> well, no. And you know, also to that too, is thinking about the, the big and small client, if you're doing all you can for this big client, what are you doing for the small client? And, and what are you saying to the smaller client without non-verbally? What are you saying to the smaller client? Like, you know, I'm getting, I'm going to do everything I can for such and such company, but you don't do that for this other client. So you're not being consistent, which is a disaster, not only for the big client, but it's for the small client. And when this big client calls, you're going to be all over for them, but you're not going to help the smaller client. Okay. Yeah. So know, know your pricing um, yeah. and, and figure that out. Right. Um, don't do exceptions for some people. Keep it standard. And, uh, you know, the big client, the small client, um, you know, really, really help people move forward. But also in business, you want to create, okay, who's my ideal client and then target those people and work with those people and get really good at serving that group of people. If you're just going for um, the sexiest client, um, you know, it, it might cause you a lot of stress and you may lose other clients along the way if, if you're, if you're putting other things on the back burner, is that, is that's kind of what you're getting at? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So try to, you, cause if you're consistent with everyone, you're consistent with everyone. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else we should talk about? Oh my gosh. I could talk for days. What do you want to talk about, Kevin? <laughs> um, I think we covered everything. <laughs> um, okay, so you're, is there anything else that I'd like to talk to the listeners about? Is that kind of yeah, what yeah? Did it's, is there anything within this topic that we didn't touch on? Yeah. Because we could talk for days, for, I'm sure. For days. So for anyone who's listening right now, I just want to tell you that I truly believe that you can do, be, and create anything that you want in life, a hundred percent. And I know that because I've created it for myself and I see so many others doing the same thing. And um, if you are looking to start a business or you have one, do it, put everything into it, know your purpose, step into it fully and, um, you know, and unapologetically stop apologizing for wanting what you want and go after it. And if you're looking for someone to help you um, in this journey, um, you can connect with me on Facebook or online. My my website is DeidraSuriani.com. I'm sure Kevin will leave a link. Um, yes. And, and we can chat and see if it's a good fit. And um, I just love working with entrepreneurs because they're, we are the future. This is it. We are actually creating the future. Every single thing that you put out there that's new or different or innovative, you are creating a ripple effect that is not only going to impact you right now and maybe your kids or people in the near future, it's going on forever. And I'd love to be a part of it. And I'd love to hear what you're up to, regardless if you're looking for someone to support you or not. I'd love for you to reach out um, and send me an email. Tell me who you are. Follow me on Facebook. And let's connect. And I'd love to hear what you're doing. And uh, thanks so much for having me, Kevin. This has been a really good conversation. And you have some kick-ass questions. I well, love it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So good. Yes. Uh, f so you can follow me on, uh, Facebook, K-V-U-L-E, uh, no, that's Kevin Olenek on Facebook. You can have me as a friend. Twitter, K-V-U-L-E, SoundCloud, K-V-U-L-E, Speaker, K-V-U-L-E, YouTube, Kevin Olenek. How do we subscribe to your podcast? Okay, so you can head on over, um, to iTunes, and it's called Human Unleashed, and the logo is black white and purple so subscribe listen rate it and let us know what you think 
And you can also listen onto it on Podbean if you have a Samsung um, or on uh, Google, I think it's Google Play or Google Plus. It's Android. Android. Yeah, I saw it. Okay, here yeah. we go. So those three, and I'd love to hear from you. So reach out. Let's connect. All right. Thank you very much for coming on. And to just to let you know for the next one, uh, we will be talking, we will be completing part 3.5 of our Me Too series with the men and women that we had. That will be recorded Friday. Saturday, we will be interviewing author Erin Chase. She has a book out. Uh, we're going to, might give one away, Beyond Palace Walls uh, about Egypt. So we're going to talk about that. And there's some other things on the cooker. Look out for a review for Stranger Things, Justice League, and The Punisher. Talk to you all soon. Thanks for listening. Uh, be good to yourself. And bye. 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 And bye.